Thanks for joining us for this week's Cardinal News Brief. I'm Jake Prime. And I'm Logan Reidstad. As finals roll around, our broadcast team wishes everyone a happy holidays and best of luck on their exams. This will be the last Cardinal News Brief for this semester. In the meantime, here's Logan with the start of this week's news. A federal court moved last week to strike down a part of a controversial 2013 abortion law requiring doctors performing abortions to have admitting privileges at a nearby hospital. The court argued the law is unconstitutional and poses a threat to women's health because it hinders women's ability to access safe abortions with credible medical professionals. Attorney General Brad Schimmel said the U.S. Supreme Court would most likely decide the case in June. UW-Madison faculty members and state business leaders have joined international leaders for the international community's 21st Conference of the Parties. This summit is in Paris this year and discusses international climate change. University representatives will be speaking on a panel that is working to update the 1997 Kyoto Protocol. The Kyoto Protocol is the international agreement that works to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and most notably deals with international environmental policy. The UW faculty panelists will contribute expertise from a variety of topics from global health to the legal implications and enforcement mechanisms. On Thursday, the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery is hosting a live web stream of the panel so the dialogue can be continued on campus. The Wisconsin Black Student Union will have more than $26,000 for programming next year. The Student Services Finance Committee approved the group's request for $26,375 on a 9-0 vote. Two members abstained from voting. The group aims to create an environment on campus that better suits the needs of black students. The academic year 2016-17 request was the group's first request for funds from the General Student Services Fund. Two new animals will call the Henry Vilas Zoom home next year. Zoo officials announced in a press release they will add a male harbor seal and an adult female orangutan to the zoo in 2016. Both animals are endangered species and will be adopted in an attempt to promote awareness about conservation of endangered animals within the community. In October, zoo officials moved a six-month-old orangutan to a zoo in Atlanta after its mother struggled to raise it. The orangutan was born at Henry Vilas in April. The holiday shopping season is upon us, and a Madison group, Dane Buy Local, is encouraging shoppers to support local businesses. Dane Buy Local is a 12-year-old small business support service that connects 800 small business members within the area. The group's executive director, Colin Murray, says small businesses are vital to the local economy. Murray says the Madison area saw an 11% increase in sales at locally owned businesses during last year's holiday shopping season while nationwide the average was 4%. And now for a rundown of events around campus, here's Trina. Thanks, Logan. Looking for a way to de-stress before finals? Free Art Friday will be held at the Memorial Union from 5 till 9 on December 4th. Also, on Friday night, there are a variety of musical performances. Beat Connection will perform at the Frequency. The Richard Thompson Trio will be at Barrymore. At 5.30, the Union South Marquee will be showing the movie Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. If a cappella sounds more appealing, check out the female group Tangled Up in Blue for their fall showcase at the Wisconsin Union Theater. Wood Music at the set will present the hip-hop stylings of Homeless and Big Cats. On Friday, watch the Moscow Ballet grace the Orpheum with a performance of the Great Russian Nutcracker to kick off the holiday season. Saturday brings holiday fun shows with the fundamentally sound fall show at the Wisconsin Union Theater and the Mad Men Holiday Soiree at the Majestic. On Sunday, Joe Pug will be at the Wisconsin Union Theater. And now for your sports update, here's Nick Osen. Hello everybody. I hope you are all enjoying this wonderful winter weather. And even if you're not, this time of year brings us the gift of many big sporting events. Starting off with football, the Badgers got a big win over the Gophers in Minnesota last weekend, bringing Paul Bunyan's axe home to Madison for the 12th year in a row. Wisconsin linebacker Joe Schobert won the Big Ten's Linebacker of the Year award, and eight players on the defense earned all Big Ten honors. The Badgers now just await their bowl fate, which will likely be a berth in the Holiday Bowl out west. Moving on to men's basketball, 
The team suffered a double-digit loss Sunday at the hands of number seven ranked Oklahoma, giving the team three losses on the season. The Badgers also faced number 14 ranked Syracuse Wednesday night in New York, which was their back-to-back -back second game against a top 15 ranked team. The Badgers volleyball team is going to the big dance for the third year in a row, as Wisconsin hosts Oregon in a first round matchup Thursday night at the Fieldhouse. The team is led by juniors Lauren Carlini and Haley Nelson, both of whom were named first team all Big Ten. Wisconsin is the sixth seed and will play Friday if they win. Women's hockey is still ranked number one and is undefeated at 16-0. The team has a challenge on their hands this week with the number three ranked Gophers coming to town. The Badgers will look to keep up the winning streak led by Annie Pankowski, who carries a point streak of 19 games into the weekend. Thanks, Nick, for the update on Badger sports. That's all for this week, and thanks for a great semester. In the meantime, stay tuned to the Daily Cardinal and dailycardinal.com for complete news coverage. Good luck on exams, and we'll see you next semester.